Hey guys, my name is Isnos, and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip. And today we're going to be looking at uh, how I made uh, this uh, small cigarette burning. Uh, the cigarette uh, burning. Let me show you the final video uh, that I did uh, because uh, OBS couldn't record with the smoke uh, enabled here. So let me just show you the final video here. You can see uh, there's quite a lot going on here. We have we have the cigarette itself before it's burning, and then we have uh, the fire, and uh, the fire turns uh, the, the, cigar the burnt cigarette into ash, and uh, we also have smoke kind of emitting away from the source of the fire there. You can see it kind of trails uh, that fire ring, and uh, as that, as the fire kind of burn through, burns through the cigarette, uh, the ash succumbs to gravity and uh, starts breaking into pieces and uh, that part is blown off uh, by wind. So you can see we are changing from this texture to this ash texture and also adding displacement uh, to that area just to kind of simulate that ash kind of distorting the or breaking down uh, the cigarette a bit like that. Uh, so there's a lot of go things going on here. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to do a simple breakdown of the process here. And uh, if you want to watch uh, the, the entire time lapse of um, modeling this, of doing this scene uh, from start to finish, you can go to my second channel, uh, uh, Blender Money. I haven't uploaded the video, but uh, by the time I upload this, it should be up here. So another thing I might want to add is that uh, uh, there will be a time lapse, and I will also do a tutorial a tutorial series uh, just for the beginners who are not really very versed into Blender uh, to understand how the time lapse, how the time lapse is working. Sorry, how the the entire thing was done in a speed lapse like that. So I think it will be a part series, uh, maybe four or three parts, uh, depending on uh, what I'll be doing here. Uh, but uh, for this video, I was just going to break down uh, very quickly how the entire scene was set up. So let's go to. Yeah, so let's get in. So what I did, I used dynamic painting, and uh, if you if you don't know what dynamic painting is, I explained that in uh, another video here on uh, another video here. Where is my YouTube channel? On my YouTube channel, top channel one on one. So there is a tutorial on uh, how dynamic painting works, and uh, uh, for this video here. Uh, so you can go watch that and uh, you will understand how dynamic painting works. But uh, basically what I did, uh, I used this as the canvas in the dynamic painting. And uh, if we go to the uh, physics tab, you can see it's a dynamic painting uh, with a surface type set to weight so that I can use an object, uh, this object here. Let me first change uh, its display type, visibility display type to textured so that we can see it. Uh, so I use this as the dynamic uh, brush paint, brush object. So if I go to the physics tabs, you can see this is a dynamic paint of type brush. So it's kind of uh, drawing the paint, uh, the white painting onto uh, this object. So as you can see, let me turn it back to display wire so that you can see how it's painting uh, the, the weight here. So you can see everywhere is painting. We're using that uh, weight paint to influence uh, the displacement here uh, with, a dis with a displacement texture. Uh, and uh, if I don't have this texture, you just see a bloated part like this. So it's basically uh, creating a, pick, uh, a weight paint. Unfortunately, I don't think you can preview the weight paint as the dynamic paint works here. So, yeah, I can't preview that. So we just have to go back to object mode. And you can see. And uh, now I use uh, the texture, a noise texture, to kind of give it that displacement, a noise displacement, uh, like that. So as that it paints, as that paints. And uh, then I used a lattice modifier, uh, this modifier, a kind of, uh, modeled it 
uh, in a kind of this shape here uh, so that as and it's parented to this uh, object here uh, our brush paint our dynamic paint our dynamic painter brush uh, as this dynamic painter brush is animated to kind of move from this position to this position as uh, the cigarette burns uh, creating that distortion and also as this is parented to this object is also being dragged uh, with that cube or with our dynamic paint brush and uh, this here is supposed to distort or kind of bend uh, since uh, you can use the uh, lattice to deform a mesh I used it to kind of bend uh, the the cigarette down to kind of simulate that uh, gravity falling down I also added this this second lattice also parented to this object so that they are also so that is also dragged with this uh, cube and uh, turn it back on so that you can see why I added it there and see this was bending and uh, at some point it was going through uh, the ground uh, so I wanted it to just land on the surface and I didn't want to use any physics simulation so I added a lattice another lattice uh, kind of the same lattice but uh, in the opposite direction to kind of again distort this back to kind of straighten it up in that direction I ended up not using it but uh, because I wanted to, this to be blown out blown away by uh, the wind and maybe let me talk about that how I managed to do that uh, because this is a single mesh but uh, it kind of breaks out breaks away uh, from the main mesh without using any shape keys as you can see I don't have any shape keys and uh, if you're trying to use shape keys here it would never work like this because you can see how this is being distorted around so the way I did that is that uh, after I animated everything here including the texturing bit uh, I went into object mode edit mode and uh, kind of where is it huh. yes So these are two separate objects, but uh, I'm failing to select. Let me see. Is it this? Huh. And hide. Yeah. So it was just hidden. So I separated one part of this mesh uh, for for that. To be the part that uh, kind of falls off or blow, is blown out, uh, blown away by the wind, and uh, kind of hooked it, operated it to a hook. And the way you do that is that uh, you can select any vertex or vertices and uh, use Control H to hook them onto an object. So, and uh, you can move that around like that. Let me undo because I don't want to do that. And uh, that's what I did here and then animated this kind of making that rolling and uh, everything else so and uh, since it's a separate piece it doesn't take any vertices uh, from this main mesh so I can I animated that falling off like that you can see that and uh, then uh, because it has uh, the same it's the same piece of mesh here so it has all uh, the modifiers a displacement a lattice and everything so and the texturing is also uh, the same uh, the materials are the same everything nothing else is changing so that's why it carries the same materials and everything uh, like that so it breaks off uh, to kind of have that uh, simulate that wind blowing off and uh, for the fire for the smoke particles uh, what I did is also was also very simple. I as I uh, selected a ring like that, uh, hit P to separate it into its own object, and uh, let me first hide this as well. Uh, okay, so this here and parented it to the brush 
uh, to the dynamic paint object, uh, paint brush object we are using, uh, the cube, and uh, so that it can also move along uh, the object. It's like I'm seeing some smoke, uh, it's not smoke. Uh, so, <coughs> yeah, and then give that a particle system. Yeah, let me select that, give it a particle system. and uh, use that as the source of the smoke uh, in the smoke simulation. And uh, basically, I think that's it uh, for the modeling part. Uh, the texturing is a bit complex to explain. Uh, it, it does, it's not that difficult, it's very simple. Uh, I don't know, maybe, I will have that in the, I have it in this own video. I may be part of the tutorial series I'm creating because I don't want to. This is kind of hard to explain uh, just by looking at different nodes. Uh, but uh, what you have to, to know is that uh, I used, I still use this uh, paint brush object uh, to drive uh, that texture around. And uh, let me show you. If I move this, you can see it's all in real time. Um, also kind of moving at that fire burnt area. Let me first make sure I don't have any key, this keyframe there added. And uh, if you, so <coughs> let me see. So you can change the animation at any time you want, even this, to this distortion will also update when you re-simulate, when you play back again. You can see that's where we stopped and uh, then uh, there's a keyframe jump here that we just added here. Let me remove that. So if you wanted this to stop somewhere like around here, yeah, you can also do that. So let me just, let me just delete this keyframe. can see I added another keyframe so let me remove this you can see it's very very procedural and uh, very easy to use and uh, since uh, the smoke simulation is also tied uh, to this uh, dynamic paint brush object. Uh, since the particle system that is creating the smoke is uh, parented to this object, uh, the smoke will also end at uh, exactly where the fire ends, I like that. So I'm going to show you how to set this up in the tutorial series, so uh, you can go to my second channel and subscribe to that. Uh, the reason why I'm keeping this on the second channel is that I, I don't want to have this uh, main channel, top channel one on one, to be crowded with a lot of videos. I just want to have one video at least at once, one video once a day, one video per day. Uh, I don't, and uh, this, the tutorial series, I'm, I'm not sure how many videos it would be. So yeah, I want it to, I don't want it to be too cluttered with uh, too many videos. So yeah, can go and uh, subscribe to that and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.